the engine smoke that the man at the throttle was Casey Jones. He pulled up within two miles of the place. Number four stared him right in the face. Turned to the fireman, said, boy, you better jump. But the two locomotives that are going to stop. Casey Jones, two locomotives. It's on time again. Uh, Don Susan, Sam. Yes, and a couple of bells from the firemen. Don't forget that. <laughs> yes. I saw your mug plastered all over the front page of the Wicked Star this morning. Casey Jones breaks the record. Makes up 50 minutes. And for doing it, the beautiful Prima Donna came to the cab, kissed the handsome Casey Jones, and presented him with a bottle of champagne. Yes. While Timothy Shine, fireman, first class, didn't even get a bottle of beer for doing all the hard work. <laughs> If that was my boy, I'd warm his feather in. Hello, Mr. Casey. How many times do I have to tell you not to do that? Oh, as long as you was driving, I wasn't afraid. Suppose I told you you could never get in that cab again. Oh, Mr. Casey. You promised me not to do that again? Uh-huh. Jimmy, how'd you like that? Gee, that was great, Mr. Casey. Uh, and someday I'm going to be as great an engineer as you are. <laughs> Jimmy, a good engineer is always on time. But to be tardy for school is just as serious as bringing in a train late. So, off you go. <laughs> so there goes the makings of a great engineer. Look at him make up time. It's in his blood, Tim. The railroad lost a good man when his father was killed. Before it marches to the battlefield, let us see how it is organized, how it looks, how it is fed. Let us get an insight into its machinery. And now, children, what was the name of the great general who was commander-in-chief of the Confederate Army? Jimmy Martin! What are you doing? 
Nothing, teacher. Did you hear the question? Yes, teacher. What was the name of the man? Stand up. What was the name of the man? Tracy Jones. <laughs> you come right here. The question before the class, James Martin, when you were so preoccupied, was, what was the name of the great general who was commander-in-chief of the Confederate Army? The answer is General Lee. And just so that you won't forget it, you're right, General Robert E. Lee, 500 times. James Martin, you're dismissed. that great big engine yourself? Sure I did. And someday I'm going to be a great engineer, because Mr. Casey said I would. You like Casey, don't you, Jimmy? Uh-huh. I like you too, Mom. I understand. But it is my wish that Casey Jones make the run. He'll get the doctor here in time. I want him to leave immediately. Yes, Mr. Coburn, I understand. What's up, Price? Orders from the President, Casey. Mr. Coburn is requested to with serum to his son who has been stricken. The physician is aboard now. Make all speed you can with safety. You have right over all trains, Casey. Pile on, Tom.
finished your lessons, Jimmy? Uh-huh. Mom, don't that look just like Mr. Casey's engine? Why, yes, Jimmy. And it's very good. Now run along up to bed, Jimmy. Oh, Mom. Yes, you have to get up early in the morning, you know. Good night, Mom. Good night, Jimmy. M.S. Coburn, president of the road, issued the following statement. I wish at this time to pay tribute to the engineer, Casey Jones, who in his unselfish heroism gave his life that my son might live. His passing will be mourned by all who knew and loved him. too, didn't you, Jimmy? Yes, but it's your... Finish this waltz, Nona? Thanks, Billy, but I'm sitting this one out. Gee, you look swell tonight. Can I see your program? Jimmy Martin, Jimmy Martin, Jimmy Martin, Jimmy Martin. What's the big idea?
for the life of me. I don't understand why you're sitting here like a wallflower. Oh, please, Daddy. Just a minute, Bill. I'll dance with you, Bill. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Curtis. What time is it? Jimmy's due in the yard in 18 minutes. Just give him time to change his clothes, and he'll be dancing with you in a jiffy. That seems a long time to wait. Going to dance? Like Gary, I forgot how to bounce. Not me. I'm having every dance with the most beautiful girl in the world. Ah, you're a fine broth of a boy. Say, I made it. I made it. You made what? Why, I'm next in line for promotion. In six months, I'll be running a local passenger. Ha, 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 ha. Casey Jones. Mounted to the cabin. Casey Jones with his artist in his hand. Casey Jones. Mounted to the cabin, took a farewell trip to the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'd have been here sooner, Nona, but Jimmy forgot all about it. Oh, dead <laughs> lay off. Now then, let's see your trip to Light Fantastic. Oh, it'll be fantastic, but not like Tim. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a pretty dress, Nona. Did you make it? You like it, Jimmy? Yeah, it looks dandy. Certainly it's become. Should we dance? Uh -huh. Well, here I am. A little late, but feeling fit. Shall we dance? Yes, Jimmy. No use talking, Mary. We're the finest looking couple on the floor. <laughs> no. There's not a bad looking couple. <laughs> oh, Jim, you're a caution. <laughs> what is it? They've done it. Done what? War's been declared. Oh. The cattle operator just shot it to me. Maybe we won't be swamped now. Twice as many trains. There'll be hundreds of them. Hey, what a sight that'll be. Girls at the station waving and kissing the guys that are going across the pond. Kissing them and thinking they'll never come back. And a lot of them won't. They'll be all mothers. Ah, oh, shut up, chattering like a parrot. Oh, I was only thinking of what's going to happen. Well, you better think what's going to happen to you if we don't get this extra out on time. Go on. Get busy. All right. Say, Ike, you know something? Yeah, more than you'll ever know. What do you want? If the cockeyed think you won't be my top sarge in this war, you're too old. <laughs> How are you doing, Willie? I'm holding my own, big boy. What's the matter? Why aren't you young folks dancing? If you had my bunions, you wouldn't be talking about Say, Tim, how was it all the Irish have fun? Sure, there's nothing too good for the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now, let's go. Side track, side track. I've got a good engine here pull out. What do you mean, side track? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
mind that old man stuff. Every time the good old flag called, I was ready. That's fine, George. I'm with you all the way. All the way, George. Be too, George. Now, don't take it so to heart, old man. I was only kidding. Believe me, if I wasn't 58 years old, I'd be right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When that sawbones get through with you, there'll be a lot of you that won't go. There's not be a cold spot. Go on home now. Oh, go on home, is it? I'm thinking of that 14 hours a day drill and them beef and beans. <laughs> Jimmy, that's the first time you've kissed me since we were kids. Uh-huh. You'll do it again, too. Nona. It's getting late, Nona, and very chilly. You must come in. Good night, Mr. Martin. Make it, Red? Sure. And if you guys don't hurry, the war's going to be over. Oh, yeah? Say, if you could get by with those feet, we'll all get by. <laughs> uh, says you, says you. Yeah. Says all of us. A note for you, Mr. Martin. I gotta go, Bill. I'll see you later. So long, Jim. Wait, Jimmy. What's happened, Rona? You can't go upstairs like that. You'll only make matters worse. But tell me, what's happened? Your mother's had a heart attack. Heart attack? Yes, Jimmy. I told her you were going to enlist. You can't show what you're thinking. Be careful. Your mother's doing as well as could be expected. She'll recover, but I must warn you that another shock might prove fatal. I know. Someone told her I intended to enlist. Is that it? Cut it out, Mom. The doctor says you've got to be quiet. That's it. Come on, take it easy. You're going to get well. I know I will. Sure you will, Mom. What made you so late? We had to fill out the 60 cars at North River. Was that all? Uh-huh. Listen, Mom. Surprise for you. Now, I didn't intend to tell you because, well, not for a while, because, well, oh, well, you m might as well know now anyway. We're going to be married. Did you know that, Jimmy? Well, of course, Mom. Who else? And listen, you know, it's a lot easier for a married man to get a promotion on the railroad. With all these birds enlisting in the... I'll get my... 
passed it around and a lot sooner than we'd planned. Tell Nona to come up, Jimmy. Sure, Mom. Nona. Yes, Jimmy. Mother wants you to come up. Congratulations, my dear. What for, Miss Martin? Your engagement. Jimmy just told me about your secret. Oh, I didn't know that Jimmy was going to tell so soon. So now you'll have to hurry up and get well, Mum, if you want to dance at the wedding. Is there anything we can do, Mrs. Martin? Yes, will you sit here a little while with Mother? I'll be right back, Mom. How are you feeling? Better, son. That good. You died gloriously, Jimmy. If I ever have a son, that you love me as you love your mother. I wish I could take you home, Nona. I think I better stay here with mother. I understand. Pardon me, sir. We've got a difficult task to run a locomotive. Why, it's been a long oil Well, how do I look, Jimmy? How do you look? Like a million, Bill. Like a million. When will they get a look at you over there, boy? Oh, hey, Captain. Yeah. This is Captain Winthrop of the Royal Air Force. Captain, this is Jimmy Martin. Delighted, Jimmy. Delighted. Likewise, Captain. Thank Captain Winthrop is my instructor. He's responsible. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Bronson, or rather, I should say, Lieutenant Bronson, is uh, he's an actual flyer. I can believe that. We didn't call him Willie for nothing. Say, Captain, you'd understand why we gave him that name if you'd ever ridden when he was wheeling one of these babies. Don't you listen to him. He's just laying it on. Laying it on? Yes, yeah, just a lot of baloney. Oh, baloney. Oh, I have you. <laughs> <laughs> when are you leaving? Tonight, Jim. Came over to say goodbye. Goodbye, Bill. Good luck. Thanks. I wish you were going with me. So do I. Write me, will you? You bet I will, boy. Bye, Captain. Please Bye, Jimmy. Me. Thank you. He goes wild willing. He's got his way. Now I know just what you're thinking. You can't go to war, and you can't stand what you think people are saying about you. You mean what they are saying, Go. Yeah, so that is it. Now you listen to me. I was born in Ireland, and I love the land I was born in. And I love the land I'm living in. I'm an American, and a good one. And I can lick the man that says I ain't. I know, Tim. Now, wait. you did that, any man would be ashamed of you. Thanks, Tim. Say, I'm due out. 
Go along, Jim. Get up in there now. Pull that hog out of here. Hey, Casey Jones. Uh, sure, now you look more natural. <laughs> Oh, everything's wrong. What, what do you mean? Nothing. They're only running more trains than they have tracks for. Outside that, the Pikes Hunky Dory. A troop train pulled a lung coming up the grade and tied up the track. They just cleared a while ago. Oh, what is it? There's another troop train due at Platte Junction in 23 minutes. It was right away on your track. Can you make it and clear? What do you say, Jimmy? Pile on. I'll pin her ears back. When you clear, Jimmy, hang on to her. It's down great after that. Okay.
Yes, sir. Mary, I have something to tell you. But before I do, I want you to promise me that you won't let your mind exaggerate things and get yourself all worked up. What's happened, Timothy? Now, there you go. It's already. Sure, I'd tell you nothing. I promised him. Can't you see that if there was anything to get excited about, I'd be excited myself? I know, and you don't. Now, I just left Jimmy, and he told me to tell you that he was all right, and for you not to worry, but to come down to the hospital and see him. Oh, Tim! Now, Mary, I'm after telling you that he's all right. Of course, he was hurt, but he's all right. Are you sure, Timothy? Oh, if that ain't just like a woman, would I be lying to you, Mary? There was a wreck, and Jimmy got scratched up a bit. Now you'll get your bonnet on, and we'll walk down to the hospital. And if you're a good girl, I'll buy you soda on the way back. I won't be a second, Timothy. No, sure, there's no hurry at all at all. Take your time. Nothing to worry about. His leg should lift rapidly. He's young and strong, and that's all that's necessary, Mrs. Martin. Thank you, Doctor. Don't stay too long, please. No, I won't. Let me give it to him, please, miss. I'm all right, Nona. I got off lucky. I'm glad. I didn't hear about it until a few minutes ago. Paper said you were seriously injured. Well, it's just paper talk. Tim. What about Norris and the train crew? You were the only one that was hurt. Norris got off, huh? Yes, Jimmy. It's just as plain as the nose on your face. Martin and Norris both knew that you didn't have a chance, so they unloaded. But what gripped me is why Martin didn't signal us. Give us a chance to do the same thing. That's pretty strong language with a man in the hospital. You're not in the hospital, more. Neither am I, nor any of the rest of us. We were just lucky. What about Norris? He wasn't hurt much. What'd he say? He said that he and Martin are noted. There was nothing else to do. Looks fishy, all right, because we found Martin a mile and a half back from where we piled up. Pretty yellow for that engine crew to unload. He got train crew to get out the best way they knew how. Jimmy Martin didn't enlist, did he? And they didn't stick with his engine. Figure it out for you, sir. <laughs> William Bronson's glorious record of speed and bravery ended when he was swooping low, flying squadron. Out number 20 to 1, Wild Willie, fondly called by his buddies, put up a game fight, triple three of the attacking craft, and went to glory in a burst of flame. Please, Eddie, I've read the article. Still thinking of that worthless Jimmy Martin, aren't you? Addie, if you don't stop it, I'll leave this house for good. Well, if you can't stand the truth, I can. Captain William Bronson was man enough to volunteer. That's more than your precious Jimmy Martin did. Hello, Nona. Hello, Jimmy. Good afternoon, dear. Good afternoon. How do you feel, Jimmy? Oh, just fine. The doc says I'll be on my feet in no time. I'm glad you're getting along so well. You children will have to excuse me. I'm baking cookies today. 
Won't you sit down, Nola? I couldn't come to see you yesterday because Addie had so much for me to do. Well, that's all right. I suppose you read about Wild Willie. Yes, Jimmy, I read it. He was like a brother to me. I'm going to miss him. But what a record before they got him. What a flyer. What's the matter, Nona? Nothing, Jimmy. Why? I don't know. You've been acting strange lately. Listen, if there's something wrong, I think you ought to tell me. Well, I guess it's the war. Tragedy of it. Oh, I wish it were over. Eddie's been unbearable lately. She's so picky. Sometimes I wish I could go away. Are you sure there isn't something else? Of course not. Jimmy, you fell from the cab of that runaway, didn't you? Why, no, no, I've told you a dozen times how it happened. But I've given you the facts, Mr. Douglas, and everything I said is the truth. But, Martin, the reports state that you left your train running wild a mile and a half before it was wrecked. The brakeman questioned Norris, your fireman. He stated that when you jumped, there was nothing left for him to do but to fall. That's a lie. And may I add, your train crew also stated that you gave no warning before you jumped. That in itself is against all traditions of the railroad. What have you got to say to that? Open the door, please. Tim, we all respect you as a good railroad man. Your friendship for Martin prompts me to do all I can to put him back to work. But existing circumstances make it difficult. Circumstances? You mean the gossip of a lot of pool room loafers? No, not gossip. The report proves... Proves nothing. Man and boy, I've known Jimmy Martin since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. And you nor no other man can stand up to me and call him a coward. Now, don't get so excited, Tim. I'm trying to tell I know you. what you're trying to tell. And I know what you're thinking. That Jimmy Martin is a slacker. And when the wreck happened, that's all you could think of. You and the rest of them. That's pretty strong language to me, Tim. It is that. And if the shoe fits you, wear it. John, I loved my mother, God rest her soul. And I know that you loved yours. Why, of course, Tim. I know for a fact that Jimmy was going to enlist in the aviation. Now, Mrs. Martin had never been a very strong one. And when she heard this, it caused a very serious heart attack. Dr. Wallace told Jimmy that another attack had killed her. And he warned him that if he enlisted, it would prove fatal to his mother. Now then, John, if you were a young man and the same condition arose and going to war would kill your mother, would you go? Why, I, I never thought about it like that, But Jim. would you go, John? No, I wouldn't, Tim. Well... I guess I'll be getting along. Good day, John. Oh, Tim. Just a minute. Sit down. 
I'm going to put Martin back to work. The best I can do at present is fireman. My fireman, John? If you like. <laughs> Here. Smoke a good one. I will, that. <laughs> oh, Tim, you're a caution. <laughs> you know, Mary, I was thinking of a beautiful poem written by Ireland's greatest poet. Would you like to hear it? Yes, I would, Tim. Mary had a flock of bees that loved poor Mary so, and every place that Mary went, the bees were sure to go. The reason the bees love Mary, like some poor men love their rich wives, is because without Mary, the bees couldn't live. Because Mary had the hive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mom, when do we eat? Right away, Jimmy. Don't let on that I had anything to do with getting Jimmy back to work. And above all, that he's going to fire for me. Timothy, will you help me carry in the vegetables? I will. Sure did my heart good, Mom, to hear you laugh so much. Even if it didn't help my stomach. Well, here it is. The eighth of your bus. I think it's fine of you, Nona, away out in a lonely spot like this, doing your bit. You know, this is my last trip. I'm leaving you. I'm going to war. Well, what about your wife? Well, it took a lot of arguing, but I finally convinced her it was my duty. I guess the government's going to catch up with a lot of these able-bodied slackers now. That'll be enough out of you. When we get back to Wickerby Junction, Barnes, I'm going to shove that remark right on your throat. Hello, Nona. Hello, Jimmy.
I always said you were a fine broth of a boy. After that workout, let's see. His son is to report immediately at the yard. He's the next man out. 12.56. A troop special. May I sign for him? Certainly. All right, I'll wait for you. Thank you. Hello, my boy. We gotta take the side in the North River. We don't make up our time where they'll hold the special for us. Don't worry, make... Tim. You'll make it. Tim, you're gonna have a tough time to make up six minutes with the load you're pulling. I'll make them up if I pull a lung out of her. Pile on. Hey, Jimmy. Open that valve for me, will you? My hand has gone a bit numb.
It's impossible for me to tell you the admiration I feel for you. But your reinstatement with full seniority rights is indeed an expression of the gratitude of this railroad. Thanks. But right now is a very ticklish moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> Take this message, please, miss. Thank you. 